The day Babo couldn't stop meowing out the window, his family knew something was wrong. Zoe couldn't figure it out. What was he trying to tell them? All day he sat there looking for something out the window. Or someone? And that's when they heard it. One tiny little meow. Turns out a kitten had been missing for weeks and rescuers were about to give up searching. Not on Babo's watch. Zoe got the rescuers to come back right away and those tiny meows led them to this bush. The kitten was like, food? Don't mind if I do. That's when Sarah realized there were two kittens. They were too young to be outside by themselves. If Sarah could bring them safely inside, they could find forever homes. But every time they got close to her carrier, the kittens were too nervous to get in. Wait, I'm sorry, does anyone else see that gigantic slug right there? Don't look at me. Okay, continue. Very slowly, the first kitten came forward. She was like, it smells like sardines in there, but like in a good way. And in. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> We're gonna get you home safely. Now they needed to save the other kitten. But he was like, after you tricked my sister? Yeah, right, I am too smart for that. They tried for hours, but after a while, he stopped coming out at all. They'd have to try again tomorrow. Meanwhile, back at Sarah's house, the first kitten was scared. She was like, I don't get it. First you wanted me to get in this thing, and now you want me to get out? Make up your mind. The rescuers gave her a name, Waffles. Hudson wanted her to feel safe. I'm going to make some meows. And she meowed back at him. But would she ever be brave enough to come out? The next morning, the kitten wasn't in the bushes anymore. Where'd you go, little guy? Wait, what's that? Slug? Nah. Tiny little meows led all the way to this abandoned house. But how were they going to get him out? That's when they had an idea. Maybe if they brought Waffles back, she could call her brother to safety. That's it, Waffles. Tell him it's OK to come out. But the kitten was too nervous. Hold on. How did you get over there? By nighttime, he had managed to escape yet again into this wall. This was no ordinary shy kitten. No, this was a cunning escape artist who moved like the wind. So they named him after a French trickster known for outwitting everyone, Lupin. At this rate, they weren't sure they'd ever be able to rescue him. They needed a new plan. He was too afraid of humans to come close, so they'd have to use crates. Then when he wandered in to check out the food, they could bring him to safety. The next morning, they went to check. Could this be it? Empty. Then, empty again. They checked the last crate. Possum, get out of there. Meanwhile, back at Sarah's house, Waffles left her carrier for the first time. Ooh, shiny fish? Nope, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. The next step, see if Waffles would let them pet her. I am not a boy, I am a statue. Yes, some pets. But there was still one big problem, Lupin. It was getting colder and he wasn't safe. If they didn't catch him soon, he might move on and they'd never see him again. <gasps> there he is, hiding in plain sight. Lupin, you really are a kitten of mystery, aren't you? They needed to rescue him now, before he outsmarted them again and left forever. This called for a different strategy, a drop crate. They needed to be able to sit further away while Lupin came to eat so they didn't scare him off. The rescuers were nervous. They'd been trying to catch him for four whole days. Would this really work? Sarah waited with the rescuers all day. Oh, there you are, you little trickster. It took hours of waiting. But finally, the rescuers saw this. He was so close to the drop crate. The rescuers held their breath. Would this finally be the time? Or would he get scared away again? 
they waited. He went a little closer and closer. And then they did it! <laughs> but what now? They needed forever homes. The only thing was, they didn't seem ready. Yes, we can still see you. That's not hiding. But then... She's so loud. She sounds like an ex Although the real test of whether or not they were happy was, would they play? That's a yes from Waffles. And Lupin too. He was like, what's this? Was over here. And Sarah knew it was time for them to go to their forever homes. But who would they be living with? This is a key to it. We're gonna adopt the kitten. Ah, uh, yeah. That's right. Lupin was coming home to the very cat who saved him from the woods, Babo. Has officially adopted Waffles. And Waffles would be staying with her best friend, Hudson, and her new brother, Biscuits. On Lupin's first day in his forever home, oop, there he goes. Still a bit of a trickster, aren't you, Lupin? He'd be staying in this room until he was ready to meet Bebo. But he spent all day and all night scared behind the couch. Zoe was worried. What if he never liked it here? Oh, come on. Can't we stay? Meanwhile, Bebo wanted to meet his new brother now. Sorry, Bebo. He's too scared to leave the... <laughs> Wait, is that a paw? Suddenly, Lupin was happy coming out from behind the couch. It was like he was a completely different cat. Zoe spent every day with Lupin until he became a real snuggler. And Bebo waited patiently on the other side of the door. Patiently-ish. Then one day, it was time. There was some sniffing, some checking each other out, and then... Bebo? No. No? Every time they let Bebo in, he'd bite Lupin on the neck. Bebo? He was being a typical big brother. Is Bebo in your house? Zoe started feeding them together. But it was important to keep a close eye. Can we help you? And then one day she noticed Lupin wanted to play too. From then on, it was wrestling nonstop. They wrestled here, they wrestled there, until the wrestling turned into licking. Before Lupin, Bebo spent all day sleeping in different places in the house. But now, the only place he wanted to be was where Lupin was. Aw, is that a paw? And they got closer and closer. And then, Lupin, the scared kitty who once spent four days running away from rescuers, was now a happy little brother, sleeping right under the window where it all started. Careful toast, be gentle with that kitty. This was the moment Lucy the kitten met Toast the dog. Soon, these two would become best animal friends, utterly inseparable, two peas in a fuzzy pod. Someday, Toast would even save Lucy's life. But right now, they're more like best animal strangers. Toast didn't know it yet, but Lucy was a stray cat. She didn't have a home or a family, which is probably why Lucy followed Toast to her home, walked through the door, and right up to Toast. Hi, I live here now. And if that wasn't confusing enough for Toast, Lucy started following her everywhere. Wait up, please. I am little. Ooh, where are we going? Is there food? Toast wasn't really sure what to think about her new shadow. But Lucy wasn't really bothering her. That is, until Toast saw this. Lucy, 
the cat in her food. Most dogs would have been pretty mad to see a cat in their food. And sure, Toast was a little annoyed. But Lucy seemed so hungry and in need of someone to take care of her. Especially someone who could clean that food off her whiskers. Lucy was like, okay, okay, I'm clean. Oh. Clearly, this kitten needed more than just food. She needed a friend. She needed toast to give her a boost to high places or a warm place to sleep. Toast and Lucy became really close. So close that Lucy even tried to nurse from Toast. That's right, Lucy tried to get milk from Toast like she was her mom, which is unusual. But the vet said it happens sometimes when two animals love each other as much as Toast and Lucy do. Toast had gone from being completely confused by this kitten to a loving, caring, protective parent. And her protectiveness paid off big time the day she saved Lucy's life. Remember, I mentioned that earlier? This is that time. One morning, Lucy had gotten way too close to the pool. Kittens like Lucy can't swim. Being so close to the water isn't safe. <gasps> Look out, Lucy! But Toast spotted the kitty just in time. She scooped Lucy up and carried her to safety. She's like, Lucy, don't scare me like that. <gasps> After that, Toast kept an even closer eye on her little kitten daughter. Toast Train is leaving the station. Now, it wasn't Lucy following Toast. Toast was following Lucy. It wasn't long ago that Toast and Lucy met for the very first time. And now, they'll never be apart. All because Lucy decided to walk through Toast's door and into her heart. A dog and a cat, a mom and a daughter. Not just best animal friends, a best animal family. And they always will be. Hank, when you were born, you were the tiniest kitten in your litter. You weighed half as much as you were supposed to. You were so small, you could fit in a pocket. It was pretty cute, but pretty scary too. We loved you so much. And we were worried about you. You made such tiny little meows. You couldn't even open your eyes yet. But you wanted all eyes on you. You were going to be such a wild, spunky cat someday. You just needed some extra special care to get big. Most kittens need a little help to stay warm. But because of your tiny size, you needed to be wrapped in a blanket all the time. You went everywhere with us. It was the only way we could be sure you were feeling good. You were always snuggling with your toys and socks, looking for someone to love and someone who might love you. We'd find you a best friend soon enough. But you needed to get bigger first. That meant you had to eat. But you were too tiny to get food from your mom. So it was up to us to feed you every two hours. You were one hungry kitty. Little by little, all that eating started to show. Finally bigger than a pocket and moving all on your own. Pretty soon, you didn't need a blanket anymore but we still wrapped you in a towel sometimes. <laughs> it was just too cute to resist. Now that you were strong enough, you wanted to see everything. Meowing up a storm. You were finally ready to make friends. The only problem was your sister Poppy wasn't quite ready to meet you. She was a little grumpy at first. She would hiss at you and she didn't want to be touched. 
But even though she seemed upset, Poppy never left your side. We could tell she loved you very much. And once she realized you wanted to play, she taught you all her favorite moves, which could get a little rough. But you would play just as hard as her. Poppy also showed you how to be a ninja kitten. The student has become the master. Soon, you didn't even need another cat to have playtime because you invented a new sport called, uh, let's say, wiggle gymnastics? Which was pretty exhausting, apparently. You'd wiggle, then you'd zonk. <laughs> and get up ready to wiggle again. It took a lot of blankets and a lot of bottles. But you're finally the wild, spunky cat we always knew you could be. You might not need to be carried around anymore, but you always find a spot on our shoulder or snuggled in our arms. Because even though you're big now, you'll always be our tiny Hank, who meowed to say, hey, look at me, please. Now watch me flip. We have another baby. When Rachel heard meows coming from underneath a dumpster, I started to hear a kitten cry. It was underneath this bin. She couldn't believe it. What was this kitten doing out here in the junkyard? But the meowing didn't stop. I hear a cat. There wasn't just one kitten who needed a rescue. Another one? There were four. Another one. The kittens were super small. They were only three to four weeks old, and they were lost in a junkyard without their mama. Thankfully, Rachel heard them crying out to be rescued. Oh my gosh, that was the most stressful hour of my life. But she knew her job wasn't done just yet, because now it was time for her to be the best new foster mama to these cute kittens. Rachel brought all four kittens back home where it was safe and warm. These kittens were so young, they still needed help eating. And now that Rachel was their new mama, at least until she could find them homes, it was her job to get these fuzzy babies the food they needed. Aw, look at those happy ear wiggles. But they didn't just need food, they needed names. Rachel had already fallen in love with them at the junkyard and if they were gonna be a part of the family for now, they should feel like family. First up was Briar and Nettle. And then it was Fern and Twiggy, the cutest. The kittens were growing and feeling more active. Rachel couldn't keep them cooped up, so she let them play in the living room. And that's when they discovered they weren't the only animals in the house. The kittens had a big doggy sibling Ginger. You might think a big dog wouldn't want anything to do with a bunch of tiny kittens, but Ginger fell in love with them right away. She was always as close to them as possible. Good girl. Good girl, Ginge. The kittens were a bit confused at first. They were like, what is this mountainous creature? But Ginger was so gentle with them. She even let them crawl all over her. Put that on your back. And eventually, the kittens loved Ginger right back. The kittens were spending so much time with Ginger, which made them wonder, is this our new mama? Because once Ginger entered the picture, Rachel was no longer the only mama to these kittens. That was Ginger's job now. Is that your mom? And Ginger wasn't the only one obsessed with the kittens, because there was another doggy giant in the house, and he wanted some kitty love too. If Ginger was their new mama, then Hoss was their new papa. And these gentle giants made sure to give each kitty all the love in the world. As all four kittens got bigger and bigger, Rachel knew it was time to find them forever homes. Briar and Nettle were quite popular in the neighborhood and were able to find homes nearby. 
But as for Fern and Twiggy, Rachel knew that they had to stay with her. After all, they were basically Ginger and Hoss's new kitty children. Now, these kittens can relax in their new loving homes. And thanks to Rachel, they'll always have someone looking after them. Several someones. Hi, Tinker. When we first found you, Aoife, you were so small and could barely move. <laughs> and you were all alone. You were going to need a lot of help. But we won't give up on you. Don't worry, little kitten. You're in great hands. We're going to take care of you and help you get stronger. First things first, let's get you home. You probably haven't had a good meal in a long time. We'll give you some food to help you get your strength back. Eat up, little lady. Next, we'll give you a warm bath to get you cleaned up. Did that feel nice, Aoife? <laughs> okay, I guess we missed a spot. Now that you're clean and your tummy is full, let's see if you can move a little easier. Hmm, something's still not right. Let's take you to the vet to see if they know why you still can't move your legs. The vet told us you can't feel anything in your back legs. You'll always be a front legs kitty. But lots of food and exercise will help you get big and strong. So you can be just as fast with two legs as you could with four. All right, Aoife, are you ready to get to work? That looks like a yes to me. Luckily, this work involves lots of playing to make your arms stronger. And you get to wear some cute clothes to protect your legs. You're the most adorable mermaid we've ever seen. Okay, kitty, time for a lunch break. Your food will give you energy and fuel those strong kitty muscles. Don't worry, we've got time for cuddle breaks, too. And back to playing. Whoa, look at you go! When you're hungry again, your mom will give you a boost up to your food. Delicious and nutritious. All your hard work is starting to pay off, Aoife. You're getting bigger and stronger every day even though you can't use your back legs. That hasn't slowed you down. You might move a little different than other kittens, but you don't mind one bit. You've got spirit, you've got strength, and you've got style. It's hard to believe that you're the same little kitty who could barely move. And now, Whoa! Look how fast you are! We love you, sweet kitten. And we're so lucky we get to watch you grow up. We're so glad you're feeling all better. This little fluff ball is Marlin the dog. Okay, okay, I know what you're gonna say. That dog looks very much like a cat. Specifically, that dog looks very much like an adorable little kitten. Well, you might think this cat is a cat, but this cat is most definitely a dog. Don't believe me? Well, have you ever seen a cat drink from a dog bowl? Hmm? Or rough house with dogs? Hmm? Or do dog tricks? Give me a paw. Good boy, Marley. Hmm? See, Marlin is a dog. Case closed, end of story. Just listen to his fearsome bark. All right, you got me. Marlin's not actually a dog, but he definitely believes he's one. That's because Marlin the cat grew up with a whole pack of doggy siblings and spent every waking moment and sleeping second by their sides. 
they never even noticed that Marlon didn't quite look like them. All they thought was, you are small and perfect. And they were right. Marlon's parents loved how happy their little doggy cat was and how much he loved his siblings. He'd follow them to the ends of the earth if he could. But there was one place they definitely thought he'd never follow them. The water. Cats fairly famously don't love to get wet. But remember, Marlon doesn't think he's a cat. So when his brothers jumped onto mom and dad's boat, Marlon decided to join and fell right into the water. Oh no, Marlon! Everyone was so worried. But did Marlon panic? No way. Marlon swam, just like a dog would. And when they scooped him out, he said, no problem. Let's do that again. So the next time they took the dogs to the beach, Marlon tagged right along. And honestly, he was a natural. He took to it like a fish to water. Or like a dog to water. A dog who is really a cat. I mean, have you ever seen a cat dig a hole on the beach? I don't think so. Maybe you still don't believe that Marlon is a dog. But Marlon doesn't mind. He believes it, and that's all that really matters. And as long as Marlon gets to be a part of the pack, then he's one happy dog. Hi, kitty. Lene was pretty shocked to find a kitten hiding under her porch steps. What was she doing here? But as Lene got closer, she could see that one of the kitten's eyes looked like it was hurting. This kitten needed her help. And Lene was ready to do just that. But the moment she tried to get closer, this happened. The kitten ran further and further away. I just need to catch her so I can kick her in to get her eye fixed. Lene couldn't bring her to the vet if she didn't trust her. So, Lene tried to earn her trust with food. Nope, no thank you. This whole thing is for you. Not interested. Nope. Ugh. So Lene decided to try something else. If the kitten wouldn't come to her and the food, maybe she'd come to just the food. Is it working? It worked! Whew. She still wouldn't let Lene pet her or take her to the vet, but it was a start. Hello, my friend. Are you here for food? Soon, the kitten was visiting every day, so Lene gave her a name, Chip. But even though Chip loved hanging out on Lene's porch, she still wasn't ready for pets or the vet. Maybe she'll be ready tomorrow. But when Lene went outside the next day, Who's waiting? You're not the same cat. There was another kitten. Chip had brought a friend with her. Well, rescuing two cats shouldn't be that much extra work. Three cats? Chip, how many friends do you have? Oh, just one more? I guess four cats is okay. Make that five. Five cats. I think I need a second. Chip had brought her entire crew to meet Lene, which could only mean one thing. She finally trusted her. <gasps> Maybe she was ready for some pets. Chip let Lene get closer. <gasps> oh my goodness, they are playing together, people. Are you seeing this? They are playing together. Chip even came right up to her. Is it finally happening? <laughs> ah, no, still no pets. Lene was starting to worry she'd never get Chip to the vet. Because if Chip wouldn't even let Lene pet her, how was she gonna get her into a cat carrier? But then Lene had another idea. Actually, the same idea, food. She laid a trail of food to the cat carrier and in Chip went. He's just chilling. Chip stayed chill all the way to the vet where something amazing happened. 
she let Lene pet her for the first time, which meant Chip trusted her completely. She was even chill with the vet who gave her medicine for her eye, but also said Chip would always have trouble seeing with that eye, which meant Chip, the stray kitten, had to become an indoor cat for her own safety. So Lene spent the next few weeks helping her get used to living inside the house, which she didn't seem to mind at all. And soon, Lene found Chip a forever family who would make sure she got all the pets and love she needed. Lene was going to miss her back porch buddy, but she was so happy for Chip. Plus, this rescue wasn't over yet because Chip's crew still needed Lene to protect and care for them. But the thing was, none of them were ready to become indoor cats or live in a house. Some of them might never be, and that was okay too, because Lene would be there for them, just like she was for Chip. When Morgan first spotted Polly the kitten, she knew something was wrong. What was this teeny little cat doing out here all alone? Since Polly didn't have a family of her own, Morgan decided to bring her home and make her a part of her family. And that's when Polly met Paxton. Oh! A 115-pound, lovable mountain of a dog. Polly couldn't believe her luck. She didn't just get a new mom, but a new brother too? She couldn't wait to start playing and spending every single second together. But Paxton wasn't sure he liked what he was smelling. He was like, what is this tiny thing? What does she want from me? Paxton was used to a relaxed life, free from any worries or potential feline invaders. But Polly couldn't help herself. She knew they were meant to be besties. So she decided to come up with a plan follow Paxton everywhere. Um, Polly, what are you doing back there? Oh, jeez. But Paxton wouldn't budge. He didn't want a shadow. He wanted his alone time. For a while, the outside world was his escape from kitten madness. But when Polly followed Paxton out the door, his peace was gone forever. Anywhere Paxton's tail wagged, Polly was right there. After following him around day after day and gnawing and clawing at his tail, Polly still couldn't get Paxton to be her bestie. This was going to be harder than she thought. But desperate times call for desperate measures. So one day, while Paxton was lying down all alone, Polly walked over to Paxton and gave him a little kiss. All of a sudden, Paxton's heart exploded with love. Paxton loved this side of Polly. Maybe having a sister wasn't so bad, as long as she stayed calm. He was like, just try to be chill like me, okay, Polly? Then we can totally be besties. But Polly had so much energy. Zoom! Parkour! <laughs> Paxton found himself to be a vital part of Polly's circus act. And surprisingly, he didn't mind it. He was like, hey, this is kind of fun. Paxton plops himself down, and Polly propels herself over his big dog body. Up next on the Labrador jump, it's Polly the catapulting cat. And here she goes. And she sticks the landing. Tens across the board. Polly can definitely be a little much most of the time, but when she's all tuckered out and needs a cuddle buddy, well, Paxton is right there for her. In the end, Polly found her family. And although Paxton wasn't sure at first, he realized life is better with a buddy to snooze with. Remember when we first met you, Francis? All you wanted to do was hide under your blanket. And you were so little, too little for your age. 
you were nearly a month old, but you looked like a newborn baby. See? Francis? Newborn. Francis? Newborn. You should have been twice this size. We knew right away you were going to make a special family so happy one day. But before you could be adopted, we needed to help you get big. The first few days, we stayed close by so you would feel safe. And once you did, you stopped being shy. In fact, you thought you were ready for your forever family and you were going to do whatever it took to prove it. You tried showing off by going down the stairs, but you'd always get stuck at the bottom. <laughs> no worries, mom to the rescue. Oh, I think You'll be climbing those stairs in no time, Francis. Don't give up. In the meantime, we made sure you got the food you needed to keep growing, starting with little nibbles, which soon turned into big bites. <laughs> That's a big piece of kibble, Francis. And you found other ways to show us you were getting bigger, like making friends, big friends, and little friends. And grooming, totally aced it. Wait, wait, are you cleaning your teeth or brushing your fur? Oh goodness, this is not how a toothbrush works, Francis. And you kept growing. You got stronger and bigger until nothing could stand in your way, not even stairs. Look how much you've grown, Francis. You're nearly four months old now, and you weigh almost three pounds, which is big enough for something really special. Are you ready? You're going to your forever home. Let's do this. I now pronounce you, Francis, adopted. <laughs> you and your new family are going to be so happy together. And we're happy for you too, Francis. You transformed from a tiny, timid kitten into a brave, spunky cat with the biggest heart. There's no stopping you now, Francis, because you're big. Potato, when we first met you, you really did look like a little potato. Yes, my potato. You were only three days old when we brought you home. Such an itty bitty kitty cat. We were so excited to become your foster parents. But you know who was the most excited? Corbin. Your new 160 pound Great Dane bestie. It's Corbin. He's like you, but he's a dog. The big one. But we were a little worried at first. Corbin was so big and you were so tiny. What if Corbin accidentally stepped on you? But all of our worries went away as soon as we saw this. A cat and Corbin cuddle puddle. Corbin's a good boy. Corbin stepped right in to be the Great Dane dad you never had. Corbin was so happy to help. We would feed you your favorite treats, and Corbin would be right there to clean you up with all the licks in the world. Two peas in a pod. As you grew and grew, we started to notice what a big personality you had for such a tiny kitten. You were coming out of your kitty shell. <laughs> you playing with your tail. All thanks to Corbin. You were a ball of energy who just couldn't be stopped. Having a big dog bestie like Corbin made you feel super safe, especially when you were wrestling with your foster sibling, George. You two loved to tussle. Corbin always kept a close eye on you two, in case your kitty puppy wrestling got too out of hand. Everything okay here, guys? But your spunky personality didn't stop there, because we quickly learned that you ruled this house. 
you would go wherever you wanted to go. Oh, Potato, what are you doing up there? Now that you were older, it would usually be time for us to find you a forever home. Fostering is only supposed to be temporary. But when we saw the bond that you had with Corbin and George, we knew that your home was right here, with us. You were right where you belonged. Corbin and George were so excited to have an official kitty brother to play with. And you felt just the same way. Potato, we love you and your wild, adorable personality. And we are so happy to have you in our forever family. Cosmo the cat just got a little brother. An adorable, sweet, tiny kitty brother named Sasha. What do you think of Sasha, Cosmo? Oh, hmm. Uh, seems like Cosmo is not super excited to have a little brother. I need to be scared of this little two, three pound kitten. Well, you're going to have to get along with him, Cosmo. He lives here now. OK, yes, he does strange things sometimes. I really have no idea what's going on here. But he's your brother. You just got to learn to live with him. OK. Cosmo, where are you going? You barely even tried. Just see if you two have anything in common. Maybe he likes to play. Gently, you're bigger than him. OK, this is nice. Sharing our space with our new little... Hey, hey, why are you fighting? OK, see, Cosmo? He's on a completely different shelf than you. And yet, you still seem mad. He's not even close to you. You have to learn to share, including space on the couch. Cosmo, don't steal your brother's food. That is not what I meant by sharing. Oh, what will we do with you two? Oh, Cosmo, come on. No, you know what? We're not giving up here. Cosmo, Sasha, I believe in you. I believe you two can be friends. You just have to give each other a chance. And I'm mostly talking to you, Cosmo. Sasha isn't going anywhere. It's this or a lifetime of growling. That's not nice. OK. See, now this is how cats should play. What else can you do together? Oh, a little bit of bird watching. Spot any warblers? OK, how about a bigger test? Eating? Without stealing? This is huge! I am so proud of you two. You are being very adorable together. See, having a brother isn't so bad. It can actually be pretty amazing. You just have to learn when it's time to play and when it's time for some space. Sasha, he's trying to poop. Sasha! Stop. <laughs> Sasha, he's trying to poop. <laughs> I'm so glad you gave each other a chance so you could become the two closest brothers and two best animal friends. <laughs> this poor little kitten is lost and afraid. Samantha and her husband had heard his tiny meows and realized he was crying for help. But even though the kitten needed a rescue, he wasn't expecting Samantha. He was like, I don't know if I can trust these humans. Samantha and her husband couldn't reach him in his hiding spot. They needed to convince him to come to them. So they came up with a plan. They brought some food and a carrier with them. The kitten was still nervous. 
but decided that maybe he could trust these people after all. Success! Kitten rescued. But just as they were all getting ready to leave, they heard another tiny cry for help. Where could it be coming from? Bring a ladder, there's a kitten up high. It's okay, kitty. A second kitten. Hi, kitty. He had been all alone up on the roof of the building. It's okay, kitty. Once they got him down, he couldn't stop meowing. It was like he was thanking Samantha's husband over and over for saving him. In his hands, the kitten felt like everything was going to be okay. Oh my goodness. Right away, Samantha and her husband found someone to adopt the first kitten, but for some reason, they couldn't find a home for the second. So they had to take him to their home. They gave him a nice warm bath and a name, Rufy. You can probably guess why. Rufy needed a lot of care while they searched for a family to adopt him. He was still a baby after all. His new roommates weren't exactly thrilled to have a kitten in the house. They were like, um, no, be gone. Marie, be nice to him. Rufy didn't mind because he'd found a safe spot all his own. Rufy is definitely a shoulder cat. Shoulders! Where he always felt warm and loved. He'd get so cozy, he would fall right to sleep. Every time. Little by little, Rufy grew from a helpless little kitten into a big, brave cat. Oh, oh, are you okay? <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, all good. Stuck the landing. And as Rufy grew, his family grew to love him more and more. Even the other cats started to like him. Rufy felt like he finally belonged, like he was home. Samantha and her husband were still looking for someone to adopt him, but they suddenly realized they just couldn't imagine him living anywhere else. Where are you going, buddy? Turns out, the home they'd been looking for was theirs all along. They decided to officially adopt him. Rufy's changed a lot since that day on the roof. But there's one thing that will never change. He loves his heroes oh so God. much. It's okay, kitty. And they love him too. These kittens were just born. We're gonna help them find a family as soon as they're big. But today, they can't even open their eyes. Bob's got these dark black stripes on his head and Knox has sandy colored fur. Before they can be adopted, we need to help them get big. Baby kittens need a lot of sleep to grow. But Bob and Knox have such short fur, they get too chilly to fall asleep. We'll put them in some soft blankets. Hmm, still not asleep. So, we try a stuffed animal. You see, it makes the soft sound of a heartbeat to help them feel extra cozy. Good night, you two. All right, time to wake up. What? You can't sleep all the time. There's so much to do to get you both big. How about a toothbrush wake up? Because it feels like a mama cat's tongue. I think they like it. We've made you a special kitten drink. That's kind of like milk. You'll need to drink a lot, though, if you want to get big. Every two hours. Look at those ears go. Oh, now you're really moving. And we think you're getting bigger. 
but you have a long way to go before you're ready to be adopted. You're going to need to get strong enough to climb and play before we can find you a family. You've got to keep eating and sleeping because getting big takes time. Someone's eyes are open. Time to check how big you've gotten. Getting bigger. Well, still too small to get adopted. But you are big enough to finally leave your pen. Whoa, even bigger now. Oh, are you two climbing? Just like cats. Whoa, <laughs> don't give up, don't give up. You made it. How's the view up there? Every day we learn something new about you. Bob, you like giving kisses. And getting into trouble. And playing fetch? Okay. Knox, you used to meow so much. But now you don't make a peep so calm compared to your brother. You two don't seem like kittens anymore. You're starting to act like cats, which means you're ready to be adopted, finally. Can't wait for you to meet your new family. Welcome home, Bob. Welcome home, Knox. Oh, I think they like it. We'll miss being with you. But we're so happy you found a family who will love you forever. Two silly, sweet, big cats. Behold, I am Raggedy, and I am an extremely wild kitty. You think you're gonna like it here? Let me pet you. Okay, okay. And I intend to stay this way forever. I've spent my whole life outside, but a certain someone thinks she rescued me. Ooh, look at that face. This girl's about as grumpy as they come. That's right, grumpy and wild for life. You're so cute. She lets me touch her head. What are you doing? Get that finger away from me. Ugh, fine. But you're lucky I'm in this blanket. Does anyone else hear that noise? Anyway, don't get too excited. I'm still as wild as they come. Ooh, she looks messy. Okay, petting is one thing, but I don't do baths. Are you saying I'm dirty? How dare you? You know cats can bathe themselves, right? Right? You don't have to do this. What's happening to me? And why is this water turning brown? Am I melting? You did so good, Raggedy Ann. Oh. It's okay. You're okay. Everything's gonna be fine. That was the worst. But I do smell pretty good. And I'm still wild. In fact, I'm out of here. Wait, don't go anywhere. Now what? A brush? Just, just stop. Okay, enough. <sighs> do you hear something? It's that noise again. Is... Is that noise coming from inside me? Is this what happiness sounds like? <laughs> Impossible! Look at this. Ow! Yeah. Okay, this was all very nice, but I'm still wild. I'm going back outside. Right after two more minutes. Eat your food, girlfriend. You wanna feed me? Uh-uh, 
No way. I catch my own food. Mm-mm, I'm not gonna go away. Fine. It does smell pretty good. You let me pet you? I'll allow it. But know this, I will never play with your ridiculous toys. That's where I draw the line. Woo! Yippee! Woohoo! Do it again! Again! Over here! You saw nothing. Don't judge me. I hope you're satisfied. You've tried to convince me to live indoors for weeks. But I remain the most wild of cats. Observe. As I climb into your warm bed, snuggle, and demand more petting. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. This is a big deal. Wait a second. Am I... a cute little sweetie? <sighs> okay, okay. I am raggedy, and I'm still pretty wild. But I also like people. I actually kind of love them. In fact, I like people so much, I'm going to let this special person adopt me. What are you looking at? Don't make me purr at you. This is Mila, a cat who loves being part of the pack. Mila. <laughs> She lives with all of these dogs and people. Oh, and also this dog and this one. Sometimes this little cat can feel small and lost, but not when she's with her best friend, Mimi. They help each other remember to be brave because before she met Mimi, Mila didn't feel very fearless. She was all alone when Desi and Chantal found her in the bushes. They heard a meow and realized a little kitten was stuck in there. Oh, nine. The water was really deep, but Chantal held Mila close and walked slowly back to safety. Mila was scared and couldn't stop meowing. Meow. They needed to take her home Meow. right away, but there was one problem. Their big dogs at home might not be careful with a tiny kitten. So they made one room a no-dog zone. Every day they fed her and tried to make her feel safe. But she still cried all the time. What was wrong? And then one day, the dogs snuck into her room. Desi and Chantal were worried she'd be scared of the giant dog. But she wasn't. Instead, she seemed happy to have a friend. Good girl, Amy. And she stopped crying. The next day, Desi and Chantal saw this. This is incredible. The dogs were gentle with her. But they didn't need to be. She was ready to play rough. Mila loved her big new family, but she still didn't know where she fit in. She didn't have a best friend yet. But it wouldn't be long. Desi and Chantal were at a restaurant when they met Mimi. Her foot was hurt and she needed a home. So they brought her back with them. They didn't know if she'd like living with so many dogs and a tiny cat. And they wondered if Mila would get nervous around a new dog in the house. What they never guessed is that Mila thought Mimi would make a great mom. She kept trying to nurse. Luckily, Mimi didn't mind. She loved having someone trust her with their whole heart. Her legs became Mila's favorite place to sleep. 
and her head became Mila's favorite place to attack. Oh my gosh, Mila, you're gonna get in trouble. Now, when new rescued animals join the family, Mila's the one sneaking in, checking to make sure they're safe, and being their new mom. Mila finally knows exactly where she belongs. Because sometimes, you don't go looking for family. Family finds you. Help the kittens find the subscribe button.